Hi, I'm Todd Jones, host of the podcast Press Box Access. Here's a clip from my interview with Terrence Moore. Let's go with Terrence behind the scenes of one of the great upsets in the men's NCAA basketball tournament. March of 1981. This was the NCAA tournament, and uh, the Mark Aguirre DePaul team. Do you remember those Bills College basketball right, teams? Right, right. Was considered a powerhouse in 1981. I, I believe they only lost one game uh, going into the postseason season. They were just picked as a steamroll right through uh, March Madness. And during that period, that was a stretch in the, uh, that started by UCLA in the 60s. Of you can just about tell who was going to win the national championship. Because mm-hmm. it was always like a dominant team. You had those UCLA teams. You had uh, the Bobby Knight teams in, in 75 uh, or 76 that went undefeated. Uh, uh, you, you had uh, the Kentucky team in 78. And, and, and so this was that team, that DePaul team in 1981. And their first game was at the Dayton Arena against a, a no-name team called St. Joe. Nobody had ever heard of St. Joe. Yeah, from Philadelphia. Team. Yeah. Right. yeah. And I'm covering it. You know, this is a, this is a nothing game, you know, you figure. Uh, well, <clears throat> it didn't turn out to be so nothing. St. Joe upsets them on a uh, on a layup in the, uh, with no time left to win the game. And the thing that, was, that I'll never forget, that's one of the most amazing upsets I've ever seen. Because it was just like a – Five second delay in a Dayton arena because everybody was like, "Oh, the Paul just lost," <laughs> and, and it was like this this screaming. Yeah, and the only th- first for you only hear the screaming and yelling from the St. Joe players, and then it's like the rest of the crowd. And I remember Mark Aguirre, the great Mark Aguirre, the guy who might have been Player of the Year that year. I think he just, was. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he just takes the basketball, throws it up in the middle of the air, and then catches it, and then runs out of the arena. And, and I was just thinking to myself, boy, this is a story here. And, and mm. Malcolm Moran, who was a writer for the New York Times at the time, sitting to my right, I said, let's go follow him. So everybody else is concentrating on, on St. Joe and the upset. And Malcolm and I are running up the, the, uh, the stands of the Dayton Arena on a snowy day, cold snowy day, watching Mark Aguirre run out the arena. With the basketball. With the basketball, tears in his eyes, walking away from the arena. That wow. was a story. Yeah. The story wasn't St. Joe. As far as I'm concerned, that was a story. I heard and he went uh, all the he went all the way to the team hotel, right? He did. He did. And we followed him most of the way. But then it, it got to the point where it's like, oh geez, we're gonna go back and see, you know, uh to what's going on in the arena. And and so there was two there, there, you had to make a choice at that point. There were two stories as far as I saw. One story was to keep following him, which I could have easily done. Or to do what I did. I, I got that part of the story and I went back. And I'm also glad I went back because when I got back to the arena, I didn't go to the St. Joe locker room because that to me, again, wasn't a story. I went to the DePaul locker room because that was a story. All right. Yeah. And what was interesting was this was back during the, the days when when a game would end it, as you know, you could virtually get in the locker room within like five seconds. Okay. All right. There, <laughs> there was there, no going no down. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. none. I mean, now for just so the readers know or viewers know, that's not happening nowadays. They have what they call a cooling off period, and you, first of all, you're not getting in the locker room uh, immediately, if at all. They're bringing people out to you in a press conference on stage, and then after about thirty minutes, forty five minutes, <clears throat> then you may get in a locker room, and by that time, everybody's cooled off. But anyway, so I, I get to the DePaul locker room, and uh, Ray Meyer who was the legendary coach of DePaul. He was about 150 years old at the time. <laughs> uh, he's outside of the locker room door. And I have never seen anybody this pale in my life. Mm. I thought, I, and Todd, I kid you not, I thought he was going to die. He, he was like leaning against the wall. His hair just all frazzled. And he just like, it's almost like it was hyperventilating. And there's, there's a group of us around him almost embarrassed to ask him a question. We feel mm. so sorry for him, you know, and he just, ah, ah. <laughs> and again, that was a scene. And certainly from a comma standpoint, you didn't really have to ask anything, although people ended up asking. But to me, my column at, at that point was everything that I just saw.